Welcome to AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, baby boomers. Happy birthday to you. Good morning, everyone. This is AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection, and we want to wish a very happy birthday to 10,000. I say again, 10,000 baby boomers today and every day. 10,000 baby boomers turn 65 every single day, and when they do, Medicare is right in front of them. They are going to uh, need to pay attention to Medicare, make some decisions about Medicare. And that is the subject today. Today's subject is Medicare pre and through retirement. So Medicare involves uh, people uh, before they retire and then during their retirement because once people enroll Every year they have a chance to uh, review their coverage and see if things have changed and make changes. So the show today is going to be very, very uh, important. Uh, If you have relatives, let them know to tune in. And by the way, if you are joining by radio, please know that we are doing Facebook Live through AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Uh, Today we have two guests. And they are both Medicare counselors. Uh, The HHS, Health and Human Services, at the national level, uh, obviously takes care of all the health and human services. And within that department, there is CMS, Centers for for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And then there is this program called SHIP, like the boat, SHIP. And that stands for State Health Insurance Assistance Program. When that program lands in Arizona, it is within the Department of Economic Security, DES. But it's interesting that DES basically hands over that program to a nonprofit organization called the Area Agencies on Aging, which runs, uh, which run a lot of programs, many programs. One of which is the SHIP program. Well, our two guests today are Medicare counselors with the SHIP program within the Area Agencies on Aging Region One. I want to welcome uh, Alfredo Alvarez. Alfredo Alvarez, again, Medicare counselor. Alfredo, thank you for being with us, and welcome to our show. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. And Andrea Parra, she's also a Medicare counselor with the SHIP program. Andrea, uh, thank you for making time and welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. All right. Now, uh, when we deal with Medicare, there's always different ways to uh, explain Medicare. There's a ton of information that involves Medicare. So we want to be very uh, careful to uh, to do it in a way that uh, it's understandable and even if we don't finish all the points it's okay because this is not going to be the last show we're going to do on medicare so we are going to focus the show on people approaching 65 if time allows we will explain the medicare program later on but if we run out of time we want what we want to make sure we cover is help those those baby boomers those reaching 65 what do they need to think about what do they need to do regarding medicare because here again 10,000 baby boomers turn 65 every single day so let me start i'll, I'll uh, ask pose the questions and then you can take turns and And then we can uh, add a little bit more if there is a need to. First of all, let's say that uh, Medicare was part of the law, the Social Security Act of 1935, but it did not pass. 
only the Social Security was a, uh, passed, the Social Security Act in 1935, and it took 30 years for Congress to approve Medicare. So Medicare was signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1965. So the first question is, um, what is Medicare and who is it for? Okay, so Medicare is health insurance for, I want to say, three types of people. The most common one that we hear about is those individuals who are age 65 and older. That's the most common one. The Medicare is also available to those under the age of 65, but who have been receiving Social Security disability for 24 months, so two years. So if you're under the age of 65 and have been receiving SSDI, Social Security Disability, you become Medicare eligible on the 25th month. And then the other category is for people who have um, ALS um, and end-stage renal disease. So those three categories of, of people. Perfect. So in the two, uh, the, 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 two the, the second and third instances, they do not have to be 65. Correct. If they're disabled or they have a special condition mm-hmm. approved by uh, Medicare, then they would get Medicare before. So in one word, you could say it's, it's, it's health care. It's health insurance. Health insurance. And let's let's use the word insurance because it is insurance. It is okay. insurance. Now, Alfredo, uh, let's, uh, when we talk about Medicare, we cannot... Uh, not we cannot not talk about Medicaid because these two terms seem to confuse a lot of people. Can you help us briefly understand what the Medicaid program is and who is it for? Medicaid is a program for people who has no insurance. Uh, you don't have insurance for your employer. Uh, you are not 65 years old or disabled, so you apply for access or Medicaid, access is how Medicaid is uh, named in Arizona. And you apply for Medicaid because you don't have insurance. Medicaid can also work with Medicare. If you, so you, are, you would be able to have both in some instances? In some cases, yes, you can okay. have both, Medicaid and Medicare, and that could help you uh, with a much better uh, coverage. So if both are health insurance, even though there's other aspects to the access program, it does also, also manages other services. In addition to not having insurance, is there another requirement that differentiates Medicaid from Medicare? The income. Okay. So Medicaid yeah. is for pretty much any individual who, like Alfredo said, is, is uninsured, but is considered low income. The only qualification to qualify, other than being, you know, a resident um, of, of the country, is that your income has to be under a certain guideline. Okay. It has to be depending on, on if you're on Medicare or not. Um, so Medicaid is for any individual who is considered low income. Medicaid. Medicaid. Yeah. Correct. And, and again, as Alfredo said, Medicaid, when it lands in Arizona, we know it as the Arizona Healthcare Cost Containment System. So sometimes people think that, oh, I have access. Well, you have a, 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 a health plan provided by access because access is more of a system, is the Arizona Healthcare Cost Containment System. Uh, even though we understand still. Mm -hmm. But again, when Medicaid lands in Arizona, we know it as AXIS. In California, they know it as Medical or Medical. Correct. Perfect. So bottom line, they are both health insurance, but one has to do with age, 65, and the other two conditions that you expressed. And whereas Medicaid or AXIS is more linked to income, we could say. Correct. Perfect. And and just want to clarify a point, like Alfredo said, if you are Medicare eligible, let's just say you are 65 and you're considered low income, mm-hmm. you would also qualify for Medicaid. So at that point, you would have be eligible for Medicare and Medicaid together. Right. And we might not have time to elab. That's called a dual eligibles, right? Correct. Those that are eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, we might not have time to reach that point in our conversation, but I hope we do, and we'll uh, address that in, a, in more detail. Okay, so what we would like to do uh, is to paint some scenarios, because I think this is the best way to uh, address these matters, because there's just so many 
variations and nuances that uh, that uh, for one person they have to sign up, for others they might not have to sign up, etc. And so let's paint some scenarios. Okay, here's the first one. Let's cover uh, people who have an acute healthcare plan with access. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me just say I have an access plan, right? And I'm turning 65. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's going to happen with me? Uh, And I assume that it could be whether I have uh, Social Security or not, I think it would be the same scenario. So with Social Security benefits or not, working or not, I am. I have an access uh, plan. I'm turning 65. What what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is that that person is. It could lose the access depending on how much is the income, or can that person can still have access, keep their access, and the Medicare. Okay, so because so, it's based on income too when those programs work together. Okay, so since you uh, uh, address that matter of the pot- potential loss of the axis. Yes. Because I'm going to, so at 65, I'm going to be switched to, to Medicare. Medicare automatically? If you don't have any other insurance, yes. Okay. Your access is what, the only insurance that you have, yes. You're and what does automatically mean? How does that look like to me in my home? So if you're turning 65 and you have access, depending on if you have Social Security, retirement benefits or not, you will automatically be enrolled into Medicare. So let's just assume you are collecting Social Security retirement benefits. You will get your Medicare card three months prior to your 65th birthday month. So Medicare will start on the first day of your 65th birthday. So a lot of our clients, a lot of people make this mistake. They get the card and they say, I don't need this. I mm, have access. Okay. And um, there's instructions on the card that if you sign and mail it back, you're pretty much rejecting Medicare. Mm. And we get a lot of calls. And that is a huge mistake because once you turn 65, you have to be on Medicare. You have to take Medicare. And this is the group that has an access plan. Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. So l- let me just try to uh, understand this a little bit better okay so if i have an access plan that puts okay and if i have not claimed social security benefits does that still triggers the automatic enrollment no so if you're not collecting social security retirement benefits you have to um, be proactive and sign up for okay, Medicare. This is important. So yes. un- under both circumstances, whether you're collecting Social Security retirement benefits or not, you have to sign up for Medicare come 65. Okay, so what triggers automatic enrollment by the Social Security uh, Administration and they send the Medicare card to people's home is not being on access, but being having already re- or being on, on, on a Social Security benefit. Retirement, disability, etc. Yes, this is important. Now, before we go, actually, we have to go on break. Mm. <laughs> We're going to have to continue with the, the possibility of losing access as you transition to Medicare. Stay with us. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We'll be right back. Welcome to AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. We are addressing Medicare pre and through retirement. So let's just touch on the last point and then we have to move to the second scenario. So, Alfredo, you said that potentially a person who has an access acute health care plan, when they transition to Medicare, they potentially could lose that access plan and just be on Medicare alone. Absolutely. Why what, is that? Because it's depend on the income that the person is receiving. So if the person is receiving income under certain levels or below certain level, they can keep the access insurance and the Medicare and they are dual eligible. Are you saying that there are two levels uh, of income 
uh, before and after, or uh, before you hit Medicare and after? Yes. Why is that? Why, are, do we, why do we have two levels? Let's yeah. not address the Medicare Savings Program concept first. Okay. I just want, I just want to make, I, I want us to make the, a reference to the Affordable Care Act, because when the Affordable Care Act was signed, the they we Arizona expanded mm -hmm. Medicaid to 138 percent of federal poverty level. Mm -hmm. So, do, are you saying that that expansion doesn't apply to those that come into Medicare? Correct. Correct. So, uh, Medicare, can you elaborate a little bit? Medicare does Medicaid expansion does not apply to Medicare eligible individuals. Mm -hmm. So, someone who is pre Medicare, so under the age of 65. As long as their income is under 138% of the federal poverty level, they're going to qualify for access. So they're going to have both. Well, this well, is pre-Medicare, pre so pre-65. Okay, Once it. they go on to Medicare, the income guideline for them to stay on access drops mm. to 100% of the federal poverty originally. level. Which it was originally. Right. So if you're caught between 138 and 100%, you will lose your access eligibility once you go on to Medicare. Okay, so just very briefly, because of time, what is the significance of, of not having both plans? In other words, of losing the access plan. It's huge. Why? Yeah. Because our, our clients, our members are used to having zero copays for mm, all of their health care. Okay. So now they're going to start having copays. Everything is at a zero dollar copay, zero premium. Medicare does not have zero dollar copay, zero premium. Mm -hmm. So now we need to educate these individuals mm. as, as of this date. In other words, when their Medicare starts, they will start having copays for all of their... I'm sure you hear a lot of complaints. Their, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. A lot. Because they don't understand why they lost... Coming to Medicare, why they lost all these benefits. Now, another. how about in terms of coverage, in terms of uh, services? Do so, they lose also some uh, something? No, the services are, are pretty much the same. They're still going to get inpatient hospitalization coverage, outpatient services. How about like, uh, services. transportation? That's a good point. Transportation, they will lose so it. So they'll yeah. lose transportation. How about in the uh, vision, dental? Is there anything that Access provides that Medicare doesn't? Um not no, uh, it, it, it only um, Medicare doesn't have really um, many services for vision, hearing aids, or dental. Uh, they regular Medicare plans offer very, very few benefits. Um, the only ones that uh, get good benefits in those uh, items are vision, dental, um, some transportation, um, and um, uh, hearing aids are the dual eligible, the Got ones it. that can keep their oh. access and have also the Medicare. Right. And again, I am trying to, to keep that to the end to see if time allows us. Yeah. Let's move to the second scenario. So we cover a lot of people who have access, mm -hmm. an access acute plan. Let us move to those that have a <clears throat> marketplace. Okay. In other words, they barely uh, made more than what access or Medicaid allows, so they had to go to the marketplace, the so-called Obamacare. They bought mm -hmm. a plan, and they're going to reach 65. What's going to happen with that group? Well, when they, they reach 65, they're going to be eligible for Medicare. Mm -hmm. So at that point, they need to practically get rid of the Affordable Care Act. They have to? Yes. Okay, okay so I have a, a, mar a marketplace. I didn't qualify for access. I've been on Medicare, uh, I mean, uh, on a marketplace plan. I'm reaching 65. Then uh, three months before 65, I have to go to the Social Security and, and basically enroll. Mm -hmm. it, I think that's, that's the end of it, right, with people who have uh, Yes, there, there might be exceptions. For example, if someone's in the middle of treatment and they already met their deductible for their marketplace plan, and maybe they're not receiving premium tax credits or any financial assistance to pay for their marketplace plan, it might be in their best interest to stay on their marketplace plan till the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but it, they would also have to sign up for Medicare. At, at the end of the day, my, the point that I want to make is this person, this individual has to sign up for Medicare because there's Medicare guidelines as far as when you could enroll. Mm -hmm. Um, so you don't want to miss those your initial enrollment period into Medicare. And it's, I assume it's very important for every person who has, say, a marketplace plan and consider when I let's say I'm going to stop working because a lot of people sign up on Medicare, but they continue to work mm -hmm. past 65. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so they have to consider whether if they retire, in other words, they stop working. 
Now they're going to go on Social Security benefits, and if mm-hmm. it's if it's a little a benefit that is not that robust, robust they can, they may qualify again for access along with Medicare, depending on how much money they're going to get. Correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, let let's go on and um, uh, let's go to folks such as myself, most likely you. We don't have access. We don't have a marketplace plan, but we work for an employer mm-hmm. that offers, mm-hmm. and 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 we're gonna ex- we're going to exclude government jobs. Okay, we're gonna cover that next. Okay, but right now, you know, I work for ARP. You work for the Area Agencies on Aging. You have your coverage. I have mine. What's going to happen with me at sixty-five? Well. If you are working at 65, are you plan to continue working okay. for a while? And you have a group health insurance provided by your employer. Mm-hmm. You don't have any obligation to enroll in Medicare because okay. you already have coverage, medical coverage. Right. And Medicare counts that. Okay. So once you, you can take Part A because it's free if you right. want, but you don't have to either but don't take any other part of Medicare. When you retire, then you're going to apply probably for Social Security and for Medicare. Medicare will send you a a document that you have to prove you were covered from your 65 years old until you Why do you need to prove that you were covered uh, past 65 if you continue to work? Because when you are 65, you should enroll in Medicare. Why? it's mandatory and, and if, for you, you to you enroll. If you are working, they allow you to delay. But what happens if delay. you don't? If you don't, if you no. don't and you don't have coverage, right. you get penalties. Okay. So you get penalty for Part B and for Part D. D. Yes. Okay. So the the issue is Medicare wants you once you turn sixty five. Medicare wants you to have creditable health insurance That's coverage. That's a key phrase. Creditable, creditable, creditable. coverage. Coverage and most. Employee, uh, most insurance through active employment, so your job, my job, is creditable. I okay. want to say most because right. not all. Right. Yeah. Um, if you're insured, usually if it's a small company, you work for a small business, um, you have to uh, research to see if Social Security considers that creditable. Okay. But it's, if, if it's a pretty large employer, you have creditable coverage. So you don't have to sign up for Medicare. When you retire, let's just say at age, at age 70, like Alfredo said, you have to prove to Social Security that from age 65 until 70, so those five years, you were covered by creditable insurance through your active employment. So it has to be creditable. And in order to be creditable, you, it has to be through the employment. Yes. And you still have to be working. Correct. Yes. It, and I, that's why I mentioned active. So okay, active. it could be your employment or a spouse's exactly. employment. Okay. Now, when you talk about spouses, this is such a critical point because I get a lot of calls. My number is all over the place, and I get a lot of calls that people are contemplating stopping or, or you know, retiring pretty much. In other words, stop working, and they have their spouse on their insurance coverage or, or policy and if they stop working, not only will they lose it, and, and they're probably the Medicare age, so they'll prob- be fine. Yeah. But the spouse, the spouse if is it's it. younger, mm-hmm. that spouse will be left with no insurance. So Correct. that's a very huge decision yes. that a person needs to consider before making uh, uh, deciding yeah. to stop we working. We receive that as scenario very often. I said the husband is 65 and wants to retire, but has the wife in his uh, employer's wow. insurance and then call you to see what are the options that the, he has for the wife. Uh-huh. So one scenario would be if the person in this case, the the husband does decide to retire, the wife will be left with no insurance. So she has to look to be elsewhere to be insured. Depending on their income, she might qualify for access or she might not qualify for mm. access, then she might qualify for, for a marketplace. Right. So at, at, if that happens, the med, the husband would be on Medicare and the wife would be on some other And insurance. that is a very tough... I actually have a colleague right now that, 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 that is not, doesn't want to retire because the spouse mm-hmm. uh, is not Medicare age. Yeah. And like when the, this, the age difference is 
a year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a big deal. Maybe you can pay for one year's worth of insurance in the marketplace. But imagine if it's three, five, seven years. What is the spouse going to do for yeah. those years? It's going to cost a lot of money yeah. to cover that. So that may force the spouse who has the job in the insurance to stay active and, and working. Yeah. Correct. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but okay. those are decisions you have to make to, you know, for in your life. But there's always a, a, a way to solve it. Right. So. Now, let's also consider that a lot of times people, they decide to uh, s apply for the Social Security benefit and continue to work. So in those instances, people need to understand that they will get a reduction of benefits, one dollar for every of benefits for every two that they exceed. I believe it's something like uh, one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars or so. Once they exceed that, they will start losing Social Security benefits, yeah. and then that reduction will stop once they reach what is known as the full retirement age. So these are there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to retirement. Yes. Okay, so. we have to. We have to go on our second break. Stay with us. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection addressing today Medicare pre and through retirement. We'll be right back. Welcome to AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. This is AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. And um, very, very important subject. Uh, I am sure that you can tell just by this, by this brief conversation, that there are many moving parts in every particular case. So that's why we strongly recommend that you contact the area agencies on aging, the SHIP program that both Andrea and Alfredo represent. They are, to me, the best. This is like your place to go. They are nonprofit. Uh, they are not representing any interests of insurance companies. They will tell you all the facts. Okay, so we were talking about people who work and have insurance. They do not have to sign up for Medicare at 65. And, however, if they had uh, requested or applied for Social Security benefits before reaching 65, at age 65, Social Security is going to send them their Medicare card automatically. So what if I don't? want it what if i i don't want to enroll you at that time? there's instructions on the card if you sign it and mail it back you're pretty much telling social security look i'm delaying my enrollment into medicare right now i do not need it why i have insurance through my employer Employee? so i don't need medicare right now if they don't return the paperwork they will automatically start getting deductions from, from their Social Security check, about 135 34. a month, 34. 34. Yeah. So that's extremely important. Yes. If, you're, if you're working, you plan to work till past 65, but you already re, uh, solicited your benefit, Social Security benefit, you will be enrolled automatically. You will get your Medicare card. If you don't want it, you need to send that paper back or documentations if you don't. You're, you're going to uh, officially be in, on Medicare. Correct. And the Correct. card should arrive roughly three months before your 65th birthday. Yeah. So be aware of that. Okay. Let's move to another scenario. There is a lot of people that have government jobs. Mm -hmm. um, how are they different than those of us who just have a, a, a job with a non-government jobs, but we have health insurance through our employer? What are some of the differences that they will have to face that we don't? Well, you have to divide the, the, the government uh, uh, benefit between a state uh, benefit or federal benefit. Mm -hmm. People on federal benefits, they can keep their insurance. They don't have to go to Medicare. But it's later on, after the 65, they decide to apply for Medicare, they will, go, they will have a penalty for late enrollment. Well, I want to clarify that. 
are we talking about retired people or not retired? We are talking about people who reach 65 and have yeah. a government job. Okay, so they would they would be eligible for the same as as me and you. Mm-hmm. We don't have at government 65. jobs at exactly. sixty five. So if you're if you're working and have insurance through any employer, you don't have to take Medicare. So that retiree, uh, oh. no, that creditable coverage concept applies. Correct. Okay. So now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about those who are retired already. Uh, yeah, they that's what working. I tell you. We're they talking about. Okay. Yeah, sorry. But have federal employee health benefits, so they have a retiree plan. Through the federal government. So they worked through the federal government at some point. They retired maybe five years ago. And now they're approaching age 65. Mm, So they retire before 65. Let's just say. Yeah. So those individuals, it depends whether they have to. First of all, they don't have to sign up for Medicare. And actually, that's the only health insurance that we're aware of other than the VA coverage that... That does, but that's another point. That doesn't require you to sign up the for Medicare. Federal? Correct. Yeah. FVHB does okay. not require yeah. you to sign up for Medicare once you turn 65. And again, I'm talking about those who are retired. Yeah. Before 65. Correct. So this is FEHB, H-B. which stands for Federal Employment M- Health Benefits. Mm-hmm. And that's only for federal. Mm-hmm. And you're saying that they, if they retire before 65, they do not have to sign up for Medicare if they don't want to. Correct. Correct. How about after 65? Still don't. They still don't. Okay. They, they give them How, that option. Okay. If, if you could yeah. just stay on our insurance, we don't need Medicare. But they also give them the option of signing up. So they have two options. Okay. How about the state government or and below, so to speak? Well, they, does that does that change? Yeah. So they have to sign up for, oh, for yeah. Medicare. This is super important. Yeah. So there's a, there's a big difference yeah. in federal versus state. Correct. And like Alfredo said, if if you don't sign up and you want to sign up in the future, maybe two years, three years down the road, you will be penalized for not having creditable coverage. Yeah, but you're talk, you're assuming that they retire. I'm, let's let's move to a point where they're not retired because it is my calculation oh. that a lot of people still work yeah, after okay. sixty five. Many many work after sixty five. So let's focus on them, the the state. Mm-hmm. or government jobs that are non-federal, they reach 65, they, they're going to keep working. They do not have to sign up, correct? Or they do? They don't. Because, they again, don't. they have insurance through Creditable active, credit, through yeah. active employment. So yeah. there's, there's, like, there's a lot of moving parts. So if you're working, whether it's through the federal government, through the state, th- through any job, and you, plan, and you have insurance through your employer, and you plan on continuing to work past the, past the age of 65, you don't have to sign up for Medicare, okay. period. Yeah. Okay. But there's a difference if you retired pre-65 okay. and then you had insurance um, through uh, the federal employee mm-hmm. health benefits or you had uh, Arizona State retiree, then there's, there's, a, a difference. there's a difference. The federal do not have to, but the state has to. Correct. Yeah. And again, these mm, are for the retired so individuals. And with the state, you can stay with the Arizona State Retirement Services or you can go out. This is Arizona State Retirement Services and go to Medicare, whatever works for okay, you with and the best. Let's go into that because I have uh, I have had conversations <laughs> with people who work for the state government, and and they're com- a lot of get confused because sometimes the coverage overlaps and the cause. There's all considerations about coverage overlap, and even money. In your experience, uh, is it possible if somebody wants to drop? The, the, the government insur- the government provided insurance and go full Medicare. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. So, so why, I assume that's less expensive? Well, if you make a decision like that, it's because you probably your um, insurance through the state uh, retirement system could be more expensive for you than if you go out okay. of the system. Uh, another reason is because you may want to, after retire, uh, you retire, you may want to travel all over the country, okay. and you will have, you would like to have a coverage that can be used mm, in any state. That's important. So Medicare, in the form of original Medicare with a drug plan, is you can use it in all 50 states. You don't need to change it. So that could play a part uh, yes. into the decision-making process. Absolutely. So when we get a, a client like that, someone who was employed by Arizona State and they're retired, they're turning 65, they essentially have three options. Mm-hmm. Uh, Medicare offers two, original Medicare 
or a Medicare Advantage plan, but then they have a third option, which is Medicare with Arizona State Retiree Insurance mm-hmm. as their secondary. Got it. So we would explain original Medicare, Medicare Advantage plan, and then they have to meet with someone at ASRS, Arizona Re- State Retiree uh, System, and they would get um, their options through the state. Right. And then they would have to make a decision. Do I want original Medicare with a supplement? Do I want instead of Medicare Advantage plan, or do I want Medicare with my ASRS? And from what I can tell, I have a feeling we are going to be able with uh, time to explain the difference between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage. I, I, I think we are going to. But, you know, in, the, in one specific instance where I was uh, conversing with a, a lady that reached out to me to kind of explore possibilities, in her particular case, it just did not make any sense to continue the coverage with the state. She went on full Medicare because of the money issue. A lot of times the state will, you know, you still have to pay some money. Yeah, you definitely you know? do. So so you kind of have to consider what is, what is my state plan uh, covering that Medicare is not. Uh, you know, am I going to get uh, coverage overlap mm-hmm. uh, am i going to have to pay more money i mean money is definitely a yes. big a big issue a and actually when we move to explaining medicare original versus medicare advantage money in the end mm-hmm. it's it's <laughs> it's a deciding factor absolutely yeah. yeah yeah some people might not be able to afford buying uh, a supplemental uh, coverage yes. or a, a supplement they also call it so money is a big issue. So here we go. Let's let's kind of uh, wrap up this matter with the state and, and federal employees. Now, so anybody who is federal, they do not have to sign up at 65, but if they're state or city, they would have to at yeah. 65. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And let me just uh, say also that anybody who, stay, who keeps working and they don't uh, uh, enroll in Medicare pass, 65. There are a couple of letters that they need to get from their insurance companies. One relates to, to drugs or prescription drugs mm-hmm. and the other one to medical because that's going to be, those letters are going to be their proof that mm-hmm. they were covered past 65 because there is a penalty mm-hmm. for not for enrolling late. It's called the mm-hmm. late enrollment penalty. penalty. Yeah. So those letters are going to be very important to get. Who do they get it from? From the insurance company? Or from HR in, in within the uh, company. Well, they they get the form from Medica- from Social Security, and they have to take it to the employer, and the employer will. Well, that well, would be to prove, to, but I think they're yeah to sign up. So usually I refer to HR, okay. I believe, but exactly. at, then I believe HR contacts the insurance, and the insurance and this provides have to that be, creditable yeah. coverage letter. Creditable coverage, and this would have to be every year. Yeah. No, I mean after sixty five, or they will just give them one letter for all the years. I think every year. I believe it's, I, I believe I think it's, it's every, every year, year yeah. that they send the creditable coverage. But letter. just make sure that people who will keep working past sixty-five, they need to have some form of proof that they had creditable coverage to avoid the penalty for enrolling on Medicare late. That's the, basically mm-hmm. the essence of this. Yeah, and all you need is to prove you had a creditable cost. Right. Mm-hmm. And- I believe we painted a few scenarios, so I think we do have time to explain the difference between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage. Stay with us. That's going to be next. You are listening to AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We'll be right back. Welcome to AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Medicare pre and through retirement is our subject today. And you know, when somebody goes to the um, Social Security Administration or receives the Medicare card, you know, uh, sent by the Social Security Administration, many, 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 many people think that they are enrolled in Medicare. And let me tell you, that enrollment is incomplete. Yes. If you only have, you went to the administration, the Social Security, or you got the card and you, you have it in your hands, Please know 
that your enrollment is incomplete. That's how I word it because mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's done. At that point, they're going to have to make a choice between uh, two forms uh, mm -hmm. of Medicare. They're going to have to choose either original Medicare mm -hmm. or Medicare Advantage. That mm -hmm. is just, the, that's why I call this the ABC, the ABCs of Medicare. Exactly. People need to understand. So we only have a few minutes. Can you uh, help us, uh, Alfredo, to what is original Medicare? The original Medicare is the card that you receive directly from Social Security when you apply for Medicare. Is the white, red, and blue card that has your name, your health insurance um, number, and the effective date of your Part A and Part B. Absolutely, as you said before, it's incomplete because then you need to complete that uh, with a Part D, as in David, mm -hmm. for your medications. Right. And you, that, but that combination is more expensive, but also you can add a Medigap. So the only way Why to would have, I need a Medigap or supplemental? Because the, the, the contract with Medicare is 80-20. Medicare pays 80% of all your medical services that are approved, and you, the beneficiary, would pay 20%. So I don't, we, I don't want to be caught up with a big bill and have to pay the 20%, so that's why I could buy... A Medigap. Supplemental exactly. or Medigap. A supplemental or Medigap that has a, so a price but covers the 20%. Right, so you would pay uh, roughly, I think it's about $300, but you will get... Uh, the Including the Part B premium, perfect. yes. And then you have a nationwide network of providers. You would go uh, all over the place, whatever you want to get. That, yes. That's the advantage of exactly. the original. That combination so now, allows you to do what, that. What uh, is the scenario with Medicare Advantage, Andrea? So... With the Advantage plan, since you covered nationwide, and that's probably one of the big differences, is with Medicare Advantage, you still get Medicare Part A, you still get Medicare Part B, you still get Medicare Part D, but instead of having nationwide coverage, you're limited to a network of providers. Um, depending on a, the plan, it could be county-based or state-based. Mm -hmm. So that's one big difference. So original Medicare and Medicare Advantage, it's... It's still Medicare, right. but it works a little differently. Original Medicare, you have nationwide coverage. Medicare Advantage plans, you do not. The cost is also a big difference. Like Alfredo said, you pay 20% if you don't have a supplement on original Medicare, not with a Medicare Advantage plan. So when you say 20% on original Medicare, does that mean for hospital and everything or yes. just medical? Medical, outpatient <clears throat> services, so doctor visits, lab work, therapy, ambulance, ER visit, um, that's with original. And again, without a supplement. If you have a supplement, supplement picks up the 20%. But you have to, buy a, you have to pay about 150 bucks roughly Extra. to buy that supplement. Well, something Cur between 100 and 150 okay. yeah. De Depending <clears throat> on the plan. Depending but on the plan. back to the Advantage plan, instead of paying 20% for all of your outpatient services, you pay a set fee, a set amount um, for each service. So each time you go, for example, let's just say you visit your specialist, you're going to pay the same copay, no matter if it's a neurologist, gastroenterologist, cardiologist, it, it doesn't matter. So it's not going to be a percentage. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a set fee. Um, another big difference is that original Medicare, like we discussed earlier, does not cover dental, vision, hearing aid coverage. An Advantage plan might offer that some advantage plans have optional dental plans optional vision plans for an additional premium yes usually yeah most of the times when we hear the word optional it usually means additional premium so that premium you would pay it directly to the insurance okay I, I already said that the <laughs> word so on original medicare you could say that the government is your 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 insurance provider correct whereas in advantage is an insurance company who is providing your coverage, even Correct. though in original Medicare, you still have an insurance company providing you Part D. Mm -hmm. Correct? So you cannot avoid the insurance companies, right? Correct. No. <laughs> yes. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if, okay, let me give you an example. My parents, my parents are on Medicare. They're in California. Even if they love the original Medicare, they do not have $300 each to buy it to pay to go with the original Medicare option, also known as traditional Medicare. Mm -hmm. So in their case, 
they don't have a choice in reality because they don't have the money to pay six hundred dollars a month. They only have three hundred. Mm -hmm. yeah. So money is a big issue for yes. many people. They 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 love the idea of having a nationwide network of providers, but they don't have the money to buy a supplement. And without a supplement is risky yeah. because you can end up with a huge bill, correct? Oh, yeah. And then on the advantage side, which they have, they still pay the part B premium to in other words social security retains mm -hmm. the premium for part b just like in original mm -hmm. and if the if the medicare advantage plan doesn't have an additional premium then that's the end of it mm -hmm. pretty Correct. much yeah and, and that's another uh, difference between original and the advantage plans so the uh the advantage plans don't have an additional premium to the medicare part b premium um, so if you enroll into an Advantage plan, all you would pay would be, in this case, the $134 versus original Medicare. You would pay the $134 plus your drug plan premium, which could be 35 plus if you want your supplement, another 150 So if you add those three premiums, it could be the 300 that you mentioned earlier. But some Advantage plans do have an additional premium. So pay, pay close attention when you hear the commercials. They say zero premium. Mm -hmm. They should say zero additional premium Correct. because people are still paying Correct. the part Most B. Most people are already paying yes. one. Very four. briefly, because we want to cover something related to fraud with a new Medicare card being sent out by Social Security. But then please keep in mind, and we didn't have, we're not going to have time to elaborate, that you also could have Medicaid mm -hmm. to yes. supplement, so to speak, yeah. Medicaid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that Medicare. we're going to have to, Medi sorry, to Medicare. So we're going to have to leave that for another show. But remember, yeah. yes, you can have supplement. Yes, you can have a uh, policy that you got from work from government to supplement your Medicare. And Medicaid is another way to supplement your Medicare coverage. We we'll have to leave that to another show. But uh, for now, Alfredo, we only have time. There is a new card being sent out by the Social Security Administration, and there is lots of fraud taking place already. Help yes. us uh, understand a little bit of that. Starting this month, uh, Medicare started to uh, distribute the new uh, Medicare card. Uh, the new me until uh, uh, it's going to be ongoing until April uh, 2019. Arizona is scheduled to start receiving the card by June this year. Okay. Now uh, there are already people scamming. The Medicare beneficiaries with the with the card. Mm -hmm. um, I want to let people know that first, Medicare won't call you to verify your information. They know your information, right. so they will mail your card. Make sure that your address is correct. If you moved or recently or a long time ago and you haven't uh, updated your address with Social Security and Medicare, so they do can so. call Social Security to update it. Yes, okay. they can call Social Security to update the address. Mm -hmm. Social Security will update it with Medicare. So you only have to call one place. So make sure that you ha they have the correct address because you won't receive the card. Um, then um, the card doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Medicare will send it to you. But there are people calling you to very to tell you that they need to verify your information before they mail the card. Don't give any information. This is a fraud. And okay? don't give any money. And don't, exactly. I have people telling you that the Medicare card it costs you $15, and it's not true. That's a scam. So if you receive anything calling you without your knowledge uh, from Medicare, from Social Security regarding the new card, assume that it's uh, abuse or fraud. Right. Medicare doesn't call you unless you call them first. Right. Social Security doesn't call you mm -hmm. unless you call them first. They send you letters if they want to contact you. And the only way they will call you back if if you call them for any reason. So make, make sure that they don't visit people. They don't call in you before letting you know that they need to talk to you. And this is pretty much the form. I hope That's the camera the form. can it's, pick yeah, it up. The social security number is going to be eliminated when you receive that the That is new, a big key. That's, yes. a, that's yes. a key why this, they're changing that's the, the card. That's why they're changing it. Because so when you reason. receive the card, destroy the old card the old one. and start using the new one. So it's he will a, not have the social security number not anymore. Not anymore. Good. It's going to have a combination of 11 uh, random characters made of letters and numbers. Right. 
And that's the one you're going to start using. Perfect. Yes, and I just want to elaborate or explain that, that that's the reason why Medicare decided to send uh, new cards to every single Medicare beneficiary wow. in the country. So it's going to take a whole year to and a issue lot of money. a lot of cards. A lot of money, but, um, yeah. but they want to remove your Social Security number, which is on your Medicare card currently, to hopefully prevent So fraud. help us spread the word. Tell your tias, your tios, yeah. your grandpas, uh, your Everybody. parents, anybody. Please, yeah. please, please, please help this effort to uh, basically inform anybody who is near. No, anybody who is already on Medicare. Because yeah. if you are not, then uh, when you reach, you'll get the new one already. Yeah, so anybody who is one. on Medicare, please our parents, grandparents, tios, padrinos, whoever, yeah. let's, let's just, you know, maybe send them a text message, an email, a call, says, hey, yeah. be careful, new uh, Medicare car is coming, be aware of fraud and scams. And if for any case is the time and you haven't received it, call Medicare. Right. You know the number, call Medicare and find out what happened with your car, and they will tell you it's on your way. Right. Or uh, it was sent, but there's some problem with your address. But then in Medicare, you can fix that because you call them directly. Most so. likely, most likely, a lot of people have the Social Security number and Medicare on somewhere on their refrigerators. But I also would like them to have your number. The area agency is an agent. I refer people to you a lot. I mean, and to all the. Uh, uh, the uh, regions, because the area agencies of, of on aging have uh, eight regions we have in Arizona, and I mean we would not call you if there's somebody in um, in uh, Bisbee. And by the way, uh, uh, Ramona uh, joined the show. And hi, Ramona, hi, thank Ramona. you so much. <laughs> and um, uh, I know sometimes we refer to people to her if they're yes. uh, on that side of of the state. Yeah. Same thing with Waycog, Nacog, and all the other regions. You know what? We run out of time. And, uh, but I, am, I feel very, very good. I think we had a very robust discussion. We went fast. The video is going to be uh, uh, edited and reposted on our Facebook page, AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. If you have not liked our, and follow our page, please do, especially those listening by radio. AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We will have this video and all the. Wow, guess what? Today is this the fiftieth or fortieth? I believe this is our fiftieth show already. Fiftieth. So this wow, is good. congratulations. We might do a little bit to celebrate the first year. Well, we run out of time. We really hope you found this program helpful. Thank you so much. This was AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.